Hello everyone, welcome to Art in Design. My name is Thorke and today we're going to check out Photoshop for the iPad. Let's check it out. Okay, so the cat's out of the bag. Photoshop has officially been released. Uh, we have it now available on the App Store. We can also go ahead and check it out using the Creative Cloud. If we go to apps right here, discover more mobile apps, you can see a fully fledged version of Photoshop on the iPad. In this video, I'm gonna sort of cover what it has to offer, what it's sort of lacking, how it compares to the traditional version of Photoshop, and also sort of how it compares to the contender, uh, which is Procreate. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Now looking at the home screen, we can see the things that we can do in the app. Here we can basically start with an image, so we can import an image and start working on it directly. We can open up recent files. We can go ahead and learn how to use the app. So it has built-in tutorials for you to check out, video tutorials, and also sort of textual explanations of how to use the various features. So that's pretty cool that it has the tutorials built into the app. And going over here, we see the cloud documents. These are the documents that I have saved on the cloud. Now, one thing to mention is that anything that you save in Photoshop on the iPad will be synced to the cloud and will become available to you on the PC. So you can sort of just start drawing on the iPad and then you can pick up directly where you left off on the desktop. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So if I go ahead and create a new uh, document. Let's go ahead and just create any document like this. And I'm gonna start a timer to see how quickly it actually syncs to my computer. Okay, so I have the timer ready. So I'm gonna tap on create and then home and we'll see how quickly it'll sync. Okay, so create home. Start the timer. That took about seven seconds for it to appear on my computer, which is behind me. That was really fast. I did not expect it to work this fast. Uh, I was going to start the camera to <laughs> show you, but that took seven seconds to complete. Okay, fantastic. So let's tap into it and uh, see what we can do from here. So basically we have sort of the classic Photoshop controls, we have the tool panel over here, we have the layers over here, we have some exporting uh, functions over there, undo, redo, uh, and the ability to create new layers, hide layers, mask, create clipping masks, and uh, filters and adjustments. Now, bear in mind that this is not the full-blown desktop version of Photoshop. I'm not 100% sure if that's the goal. Maybe it is, maybe they're actually trying to replicate the entire feature set of Photoshop using the iPad. It'd be really interesting to see if they can actually pull that off. But basically this is sort of a cloud version of the app. So it's stripped down, it has fewer features and is more focused around the actual use case of using an iPad. Now there are some key features that are missing. For example, the ability to modify the press in uh, in detail, uh, basically if we tap on the three dots over here, we can sort of um, change a few things. We can tap on this smoothing, we can increase that, the flow, angle, roundness, and blend mode. Pretty much only thing we can do here. Um, this is, I think, just a preview, right? Yes. This is the transparency and this is the size of it. And here we can flip between the primary and the secondary color. Now we can actually pick this up and place it where we want. Now compare this to, for example, in uh, Procreate, uh, in the newest version of the program. If we tap on this brush, for example, uh, this is the Brush Studio. This uh, basically allows us to change every single uh, freaking thing about the brush, the way it behaves, the way the grain interacts with the above layer, the way the 
the paint that is on top, renders with the paint that is on the bottom, and everything about how it interacts. There's so much, so much depth to it. Adobe has uh, some catching up to do if they're gonna be able to compete on this level, but I think it's worth giving them a chance. This is the first version of actual Photoshop on iPad. Now the actual drawing experience, you know, when you're actually putting the paint down, uh, it's very similar to uh, Procreate. So tap with two fingers to undo, three fingers to redo. Very intuitive, very, very quick to uh, do this. This is the contextual button. So this allows us to switch between erasing and painting. So uh, in Procreate, this is done with double tapping on the Apple Pencil. But double tapping on the Apple Pencil will actually bring you uh, to a zoomed out version. So you can see the entire canvas. So right now we're looking at this specific detail. I double tap, I can see the whole thing. Double tap back and continue working on the tiny little details over here. Does this look good? Yeah, pretty good. Let's continue. Over around. So this button right here. Uh, is contextual to the tool that you have selected. So the lasso tool will have a contextual control uh, associated to it, uh, allowing you to add to the selection, remove from the selection. But yeah, I'm not gonna go into detail about every single use case that the contextual button has uh, with all the tools. If you'd like to see a video about that in the future, then do leave me a comment down below. I would love to do a video about uh, how this enhances the workflow. But yeah, as we expect, we have most of the uh, main functionality of Photoshop. We can fill, we can uh, do gradients, which is really nice to have. Now we see the little triangle over here that basically tells us that there's more tools hidden behind here. So if we tap and hold here, can see the automatic selection tool, the rectangle and the circle. Uh, if we tap on the automatic selection tool, uh, then we can just draw and make a selection as we draw. Photoshop on the PC has included a number of additional features in this tool, allowing you to make more detailed and more refined selections based on various parameters. Hopefully they'll include something like this in the future. And then of course we can, you know, add text we can change the font, we can change the, uh, we can change the color of the text. What's going on? Oh, I only register TGG. Yeah, we can add text, we can change the color, we can change uh, the paragraph style and all that sort of stuff. Moving on to the layers, we uh, see the layers right here. We can obviously move these as we wish. We can hide them. The background layer comes by default not locked. So if you want to lock the background layer, you can go ahead and tap on the three dots right here and lock the layer. Now, nothing happens if you tap on it. Nothing happens if you slide on it, like in, uh, in Procreate, but uh, you can apparently select using slide to the right. Oh, actually I can rename the layer. What happens if I tap on this? Okay, nothing happens. Now there's probably room for uh, usability improvements here, but if you want to edit this layer, you have to tap on the three dots right there. And there you can lock the layer, delete it, rename it, add clip adjustments, multi-select, duplicate, copy, and all the rest of it. Now, one thing to note is adjustment. Now, if we tap and hold on this one right here, we can create a new layer or we can create an adjustment layer. So if we create an adjustment layer, we can um, make it adjust the brightness and the contrast and make it go black and white, a color balance, exposure, hue saturation levels and vibrance adjustment layer. Okay, to explain the adjustment layers, I'm going to clean things up a little bit. I'm going to delete all of these layers. And that's just Go ahead and fill this with black. I'm going to make a new layer, and this layer is going to be, let's say, blue, like this. And I'm just going to paint something, something like this. 
Now I'm going to create an adjustment layer, new adjustment layer, and we're going to go ahead and do color balance. Now see what happens when I interact with this. What's actually going on right now is it's affecting the entire image. It's also affecting the background. So let me just lock the background so that it's not affecting what uh, what we see. So, okay, let me actually make these into a group. There we go. Okay, so I have all of these layers in a group now, and I'm gonna make this a clipping mask onto the group. So anything in this group is only gonna be affected by this adjustment layer. So now, once I change this, we can see it only affects the layers in the group. So we can see I can change the color balance of these colors in this group and all that sort of stuff. And the beautiful thing is we can tap on the mask. So it, it includes a mask by default and we can remove basically areas from the adjustment layer. So now I'm actually removing uh, areas from the adjustment layer by using a mask on the adjustment layer, which is controlling this group. And just goes to show that, you know, there's a lot of functionality built into Photoshop on the iPad. Uh, it's not 100% comparable to Photoshop, uh, the complete version, but definitely a worthy first step. I'm definitely gonna keep my eyes on it in the future uh, to see how it evolves over time. There are definitely some really cool and interesting features that Photoshop on the iPad has. Now, once we're happy with everything, we can go ahead and export this, quick export a snapshot or publish as PNG, JPEG, Photoshop file, TIFF file, uh, increase the quality of it and the format and then export it. Now, if you wanna see a fully fledged tutorial about Photoshop on the iPad, do let me know in the comments down below and also uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We do a lot more art and design related stuff on this channel. If you don't want to miss any of that, then please do consider subscribing. And now for the final part of this video, I want to show you how this looks on the PC. So let me just start recording right here. And uh, I turned off the Wi-Fi because I was getting way too many notifications. So as soon as I turn on the Wi-Fi, uh, I should start syncing this uh, to the cloud and uh, we'll see it on the PC. So turn on the Wi-Fi. Let's uh, tap out of this. And let's go over to the PC and let's see how quickly, let's see how quickly this will sync. And there we go, here we have it on the PC. If we open it up, we can see we have everything the way we left it off. We can pick this specific layers up and even select the uh, adjustment layer. Tapping on the layers right here, you can see we have everything exactly where we left it off. Now we can continue working on it, maybe increase the size of this. Um, now rotate this, add some text. Like so. And let's just go ahead and save this. Close it, move back to the iPad. And as I'm sitting down, <laughs> we see it pop up. And there we go. That is pretty fantastic. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. Subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.